All right, here is a video on um, the review for 11, 12, 13 for our quiz. Uh, you should go through, see what stuff you're comfortable with, what stuff you're not. And then um, I'll pause it here because this isn't too hard stuff. Okay, so this is a good recap of the parent graph. You're supposed to know these five points. Um, you can always come up with them by just plugging it in and squaring it, right? Because negative 2 squared is 4, 0 squared is 0. All right, and... Um, it's important. Here's the five dots you should know. You give it a nice U shape. Um, if there's a negative in front of A right here, then it flips it upside down. If A is bigger than one, it is vertically stretched. If A is between zero and one, it's compressed. The Y values, and that's why it's important to like know the height of these, what they're supposed to be, because then you can tell if it's vertically compressed or stretched if you're looking at a graph. This is a shift left or right, that right there. And it's the opposite of what it looks like. So if it's a minus, you'll go right. And if it's a plus, you'll go left. Um, and shift up or down is up here. And that one actually doesn't lie to you. So that actually tells the truth. All right, moving on. All right, and then we kind of get to see the shift left and right. It always lies to you if it's the x-axis one. It always tells the truth if it's the back one. So pause, check those out. Then we'll get to a more interesting thing. Describe the transformations and graph the functions. So when I see a one-third there, that would be a vertical compression by one-third. That means all the y values are one-third as high as they usually are. Um, this means x uh, is shift uh, right four, and then the back thing is shift down so what I do first is I go left 4 and down 3 and this is where my vertex is and I pretend that it's 0, 0 so I'll rewrite it with 0, 0 a little uh, grid mark there and then my y values are 1 third as high as they usually are so normally it's right 1 up 1 this time it's right 1 up a third so this is a really squished guy um, oh shoot I said right 4 down 3 then I did left. My bad. My bad. All right. There. That's better. Woo. Okay. I just noticed that right here. Okay. So here's my zero, zero. And I go right one up a third, left one up a third. And then instead of two, four, um, you go two and then four thirds. I don't know if you know this, but four thirds is going to be uh, 1.3. So it's just barely above that. So it's really why. But the first time you're going to get a nice number is if you put a 3 in. Um, 3 normally goes up 9 because 3 squared is 9. So it's going to go right 3 up 3. Um, and right 3 left 3. So you get this nice curve. Ooh, flat guy here. Okay. Then we go to this one. Um, don't be shocked when you don't see parentheses. That just means there's no left or right shift. So I got three things going on. I got a negative sign, so it's flipped upside down. Um, I got a two, so it's vertically stretched by two. Remember, I don't care about the negative sign as far as being greater than one. In my opinion, that's a number greater than one. Um, it's just the negative sign flips it upside down. And then we shift up 5. So we're going to go up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right up here. And that's my new 0, 0. Right? So now um, I need to flip it upside down and stretch by 2. So normally I would go right 1, up 1 on my parent graph. This time I'm going to go right 1, down 2. So down is because of the negative. The 2 is because every y value should be twice as far. And then the normal point is right 2, up 4. Well, i got to be twice as far down. So right 2, down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Boom. Uh, so yeah. There we go. All right, so then we go to the next one, and here we have a picture, and I want to describe what's happened to it and then write the equation. So right now it looks like it's flipped upside down. 
it's not shifted at all um, but it is uh, compressed because normally I would expect right two down four right and I would expect this to be a height of four but really it's a height of two so to me that's a vertical it's squished so it's compression by one half so that's a pretty tricky one so my equation is going to be like this y equals um, negative one half x squared because there's no left or right and there's no up or down so you don't have to put plus zero if you don't want that takes care of the upside down that takes care of the vertical compression all right so this one let's see this one's been shifted to the right five and up two and then it's supposed to go right one up one and it looks like it does so on this one it looks like it's not stretched or anything it's not flipped upside down so this one's just shift right five and shift up two so y equals right five would actually look like a minus and up two don't forget you're squared a lot of people forget that you're so focused on the shifts and the flips that you forget that all right moving on all right so now we have um what is vertex form that is so you can easily tell the vertex this is called standard form and if i needed to get it in vertex form i need to find the vertex luckily for me i remember negative b over 2a will find the x part of the vertex so negative b is 12 negative 12 over 2 times a so negative 12 over negative 4 is 3. So that, oops, that finds the x part of my vertex. So now I know my vertex is at the point um, 3 comma something. To find the something, I can always plug that 3 into the original equation. So h of 3, we're going to go negative 2 times parentheses 3 squared plus 12 times 3 minus 17. And that's going to be negative 2 times 9 plus 36 minus 17 and you type all that in you get a 1 which means my vertex is at 3 1 now to write this equation of vertex form all I need is my vertex and my a good news is your a here is the same as your a was here so it's just a negative 2 so all I have to write is y equals let me zoom out a little y equals negative 2 times x minus 3 squared plus 1 because it's shifted right 3 up 1 so I make that work there it is all right the next part is um just finding key features so all right so to find vertex you can find this stuff in your notes too vertex is negative b over 2a and plug in the x to find the y like we just did above um axis of symmetry you just steal the x from the x from the vertex and set x equal that it's a vertical line x intercepts this one's probably the most amount of work um, you have to set it equal to zero and solve you can either use factoring or quadratic formula i'm not sure why that bottom's there um, i don't know why it's... all right so to find the y intercept you have one of two options um, this always works you can set x equal to zero and simplify um, or if it's in standard form, and yes, you should know what standard form looks like, here's one. Um, you can just look for the C term. So like the y-intercept is 7 here. Um, how to find a max or min? Well, it's your vertex, and it's a max if your graph looks like that. And it's a min if your graph looks like that. <clears throat> how to tell which way your graph opens? If A is positive, it opens up. If A is negative, it opens down. All right, now we're going to uh, find all the features using algebra, so we're not using our graphing calculator. Um, the vertex, I can't see it right away, but I can see the y-intercept. The y-intercept is 7. Now, it does say write as a coordinate, so I know to write 0, 7. So I'm going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Put a dot. All right, we'll come back to vertex. X-intercepts. Um, we'll probably do quadratic formula for that. Axis of symmetry is an easy one. 
because I just steal the zero, right? X equals zero. So my axis that I could fold this on, AOS is X equals zero. Okay. Um, does the graph have a max or min? I already know it's going to be a min. You know why? Because A is positive, so it opens up, which means that's a min. And once we find vertex, we'll have that answer. All right, so let's find vertex next. Remember, vertex is negative B over 2A. And in this problem, that's uh, 8, positive 8 over 2 times 2, which is 8 over 4, which is 2. Okay, so my vertex, the X part is 2. The y part I'll find by plugging it in. So 2 times 2 squared minus 8 times 2 plus 7. That's going to be 2 times 4 is 8 minus 16 plus 7. So negative 8 plus 7 is negative 1. So there's my vertex. I also know that is my, my min. So at 2, negative 1 is my min. I put that dot on there. Now all I gotta find is my x-intercepts. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and find that now. Oh yeah, that's my min. So oh shoot. I don't know why I did that. My axis of symmetry was supposed to be stolen from the vertex. Gosh darn it. So it's x equals two. I steal it from there. Okay, that means if I draw a line here, A, O, S is X equals 2. Alright, so that's the line I can fold over. So I actually, I already know a point here. I can reflect that over. Alright, now for more points, uh, I need the X intercept. So I'm going to do quadratic formula. I'm going to set this guy to 0. I don't want to do factoring because that's got a number in front, so I'm going to do a uh, quadratic formula, which is x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 2a. Okay, so I'm going to pause and do that. All right, so I did the math on that. I did 8 plus radical 8 over 4. I got 2.71. I did 8 minus radical 8 over 4. I got 1.29. Make sure you do that carefully. And then I wrote them as coordinates, and they go right here. Um, 2.71 and 1.29. There's my two dots. And I have enough for a beautiful graph. I just go with my little U shape. Boom. Done. All right, then we have a chunk of graphs here. Uh, you can solve a system by looking for where they cross if you're looking at the graphs. And sometimes you get two answers, sometimes you get one answer, and sometimes you get no real answers. So this would be like if they hit twice, if they hit just once, or if they don't even hit at all. Okay, and then algebra, you'll get like quadratic formula, you'll get a negative under the radical, so no real solutions. Um, and then we'll try this here, solve it algebraically, and we'll check graphically. Okay, so with algebra, I'm going to set this one equal to that one, since they both equal y. Oops, that's negative 1. So I'm going to subtract 4x, I'm going to add 11. So 0 is x squared minus 7x plus 10. So two numbers, I'm going to factor this one. Two numbers that multiply to make 10 but add to be negative 7. Way quicker to factor. So I'll get two answers of 2 and 5. Remember, those are my x-intercepts. Or those aren't my x-intercepts. Those are my solutions. 2 comma something and 5 comma something is where these graphs cross. To find out the something... All I got to do is plug that in. So I'm going to pause and plug that in. All right, so I plugged in the 2, and I got a negative 3 for my y, and I plugged in a 5, and I got a 9 for my y, which means these graphs should cross here and here. And if you look at the graph, they do. Look, 2, negative 3. So that worked out really nicely. Awesome.